Dom D'Amelio, welcome to the Gohio cast. The uh, well, the first ever Gohio cast podcast that we're going to have here. Uh, nice. Brought to you on the Gohio cast, Gohio cast pod work, uh, podcast network. I mean, we've got a, uh, We've got Kent State Wrestling and we've got the Barbarian Hour. Now we've got the Gohio Cast podcast. So Dom D'Amelio, the founder and brain trust of the National Middle School Duels. Welcome to the Gohio Cast. How are you, sir? Good. Thanks for having me, Zeb. Always great to talk to you. Love the oh. Indians hat, by the way. Very cool. Well, Thank you. Did you see that they're the youngest team in uh, Major League Baseball right now? They just clinched. They clinched the uh, Central, and uh, nobody gave them a chance. So it's good to see Cleveland uh, back on top. So thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. So let's talk national middle school duels. Uh, what year are we in minus the COVID year? Uh, well, we can include the COVID year. We still ran it um so that's, we never that's right. shut down that's yeah. right you guys got to do it you were like the tail end of uh, when things started to open back up in november that year weren't you oh uh, that we're right kind of in the middle of it in november but um everybody was shutting down and we we had to change locations we went to the soccer dome and and we made it happen um so that was the rosford year that was the that's rosford right. year with 10 parents and coaches and fans right that's For right me. that's right um, oh, but man. this is our eighth annual uh, event. Um, uh, we're back better, is it better than ever. We're at the Glass City Center. Um, so it was renamed from the Seagate Center. Uh, they renovated the arena. So looking forward to seeing that. I haven't been in it yet, but uh, they polished it and put some glass walls in. And then also, too, they um, renovated the hotels. So there's two hotels now connected to the event. And... Um, Excited to be back. So, the, you know, seven of the eight years, you know, coming on the eighth year, um, have been at the Seagate Center, now Glass City Center. Uh, what a facility. But last year was kind of a downer for me because the hotels were being renovated so that they yes. couldn't do the one-stop shop last year, right? Yes, that's our, big, that's our big selling point. And last year, the hotel wasn't available because of renovations, right? Yep. But that's, that's not this year. This year is going to be on. That's Still right. Great time. Yep. We negotiated uh, uh, good rates. And so there's a Hilton Garden Inn and a home, home with suites. So they got suites too. Excellent. So people can go right. They can get their Friday evening way in and never have to leave the hotel. There's restaurants. There's bars and restaurants all around there within walking distance in downtown Toledo of the Glass City Center. And there's just so much to do in downtown Toledo. And if they don't want to leave their hotel, they don't have to leave their hotel. So That's they got right. a lot of options. They don't even need to step outside if they don't want to. So they can walk through the hallways to the event. And there's a lot of great restaurants. So Toledo's kind of renovated itself. Um, a lot of fun restaurants around the area. So this event, you know, you and I talked about it when it was your brainchild eight years ago. And you wanted to really make this an elite event. And when we first got into it, uh, geez, Pete, it's going to be 2014. Was that the first year, Dom? 2015, right? So 2015. When 20... you were kicking it around to me, you were like, hey, we need to get this national exposure. And we really worked super hard. And, it, and it, flow wrestling was a big part of it, right? Right. So once you guys so right, got on. Right, yeah, right off the bat, uh, you connected me with flow. They got involved. Um, Rudis got involved defense. So they've been there with us the entire way and, um, they've been great partners. So, um, I think that first year we had like 12 teams. Um, now we have a waiting list teams want to, you know, come to the event. We really don't advertise the event as far as teams because we're full. Um, and so it's highly competitive. So the best kids from the country come, uh, we've seen some superstars in the sport you know, participate. And the level of wrestling is off the chart. It's even the, the referees. Uh, yeah, they're always continually amazed how uh, the level of wrestling is top rate. So I've got the pleasure of calling a lot of the final, all the finals, as a matter yeah, of fact, right? right? And just Thank to you. think, um, you know, we've had Casey Squiderski wrestle in the event. 
you know, we've had uh, Manta, the Mantanonas from California, uh, the Bassett brothers from Pennsylvania, the Ferrari brothers from Texas and now Oklahoma. The, the field is always star studded, man. It is an incredible field. Yeah, yeah. And now we're going to start to see those guys really making runs at the NCAA championship. And the crazy thing about it is Dylan D'Amelio, your son, never got to wrestle in this event, right, Dom? No, he was right at the tail end of it, so he wasn't able to. He was a freshman. But we also had uh, Cassiope, Chinnam, uh, the Busakis. Yeah, the Busakis. some big names. The sisters. Yeah. The sister, the Busakis sister, she's unreal. She, she was is. At, I remember she calling phenomenal. a match where she was at uh, in, in Rossford at the soccer dome, and I was like, this girl is impressive. And then um, – uh, Jack Forrest, uh, he's pretty good, right? right. I mean, right. that guy was there in uh, 2000. Uh, he was in the 2021. And uh, I've always been, just been impressed by the talent that comes in. Uh, when you, you start an event like this and you get 12 teams out of the gate, do you see it becoming the monster that it's become with 30-plus teams, a, a double-digit waiting list? Do you really see that coming? Or did you just, I mean, you guys got it really good. It's community. It's, you know, it's, it's Genoa wrestling. Perrysburg wrestling is a big part of it. Right. OAC is a big part of it. And you've got a lot of volunteers, but do you see it growing to the magnitude that it has, Dom? Well, I think what tipped it over is when the PA team started coming. So Ohio's competitive in wrestling and the PA is competitive. And so once the PA team started coming, then uh, uh, Pinnacle came, Top Young Guns came. And, and that, that kind of tipped it over the edge. And so then everybody wanted to be there. Um, and so, you know, we try to be highly organized, try to run a, a efficient tournament. Um, one of the great things about the tournament is um, we have no buys, no downtime. Um, they wrestle four or five matches per day and then everybody's done by five o'clock. So uh, the teams have a full evening to hang out and have fun and, and Zeb, some of my best memories are on the road, just hanging out with the guys after tournaments. I mean, that some great, great memories. And now you're doing it, you know, traveling to all the Big Ten schools and across the country. Uh, NCAs will be in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I know you've been out to Tulsa a, a couple of times, probably for Tulsa Nationals. So you're no stranger to Tulsa is my guess, right, Dom? No, no. I love it. I love it. So. Um, I was just thinking about OAC, obviously the Ohio Athletic Committee, and Jared Opfer, um, they're a big part of it. A lot of the mats come from OAC. How many mats do you guys normally lay down on the floor at Seagate? 16 mats. So yeah, uh, OAC provides most of the mats, um, as do some of the TVs. So they've been a huge um, partner with us. Um, so we ship it in, ship it out, um, and they help us get it organized. So OAC has been a great partner. Jared Ofer does an excellent job and um, even sells us mat tape. I mean, he, he does it all. And then you got guys Seiko. They bring their team from West Shore, comes into the event. You know, uh, if I, I, I think Patty Gallagher wrestled in this event, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I'd have I'm to go not, back and look. Yeah, I'd have to look myself. Yep. I'd have to go back and look and see if Patty wrestled in it. But West Shore is always bringing hammer teams. Um, I'm a, you know, obviously a huge fan of what Defense Soap does, but what's it like having a partner like Guy Seiko and Defense Soap and National Middle School Duels? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, Guy just knows what we need. He sends a shipment to us. Um, so we have all the Defense Soap, all the wipes. Um, we outfit him for all the tables. Um, we have hand sanitizer. I mean, he does it all. So um, wonderful partner. I mean, doesn't even hesitate. He's always there to support us um, and provide any materials as needed. He's been there since day one. Uh, we've had Schmidt's corner rugs there. Yep. yep. Um, and then obviously the main partner besides Defense Soap would be Rudis. Talk about what Rudis does for the event and, and what it's like to partner with Rudis out of Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, Rudis has been phenomenal too. So I just got off the phone today with uh, Rudis. So they every year they develop custom gear um and so i got one of their shirts from last year on um custom hats um they run all our logos they do custom gear for the event um they bring in an entire display outfit um they actually pull their truck into seagate and they set up uh you know 20 by 40 area and um 
their gear is first rate, great to work with. Um, they also develop custom gear for the championship team, so that's kind of cool. So we've been going over logos and some mock-ups of the, the shirts. So um, couldn't ask for a better partner. They're providing some raffle items too, so we're going to be selling some some custom gear or some signature gear. So um, like last year, Carl Snyder signed some gear and we raffled that off. So um, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to have this year, but it'll, it'll be top rate for sure. So, you know, if you looked at their showing of their athletes at the world championships, you know, Zane Rutherford in the finals, obviously Kyle wins again. Um, I believe Hilda Brandt's one of their athletes for the women. So, I mean, that's just off the top of my head, right? They got, that's just, just off the top of my head. Right, Their right. signature series with shoes and the research and development that, you know, Rudis has put into shoes has been pretty impressive, right? Obviously with just, just off the top of my head, that brief roster of athletes, right? Knowing that they're bringing custom shoes, they're bringing all the different things that they do for you guys, as far as the shirts, gear, the whole nine yards, oh. and it's a full store, right? It's a full store. It is, it is an amazing setup. Um, and you know, Jesse Lang, one of the, the co-owners, I mean, one of the hardest working guys in the industry. I mean, he is everywhere. He's always accessible. He even did a, a, a presentation at one of our meet the team nights for our high school. Um, so class, class organization all around. Yeah. So, you know, when you guys bring in the teams and the, you know, just the, some of the past champions, right. The, the minions, out of Georgia, uh, the Russell family runs minions. Uh, always super impressive. Roundtree, I think Roundtree Academy's been at it. I know California brings two teams, California Golds, uh, their, their A team. Um, and then obviously Dynasty Death Row. You've had a bunch of different teams there. Obviously M2. What was M2, it like? Yeah. Talk about the time you get a call. From the world <laughs> champ, Olympic gold medalist. This was before he was Olympic gold medalist. Right. Um, David Taylor, the man himself, David Morris Taylor, gives you yeah. a call. Were you like, is this what's going on? Here, no, right? so he he funny story. He called me and it was like an Ohio number. And he said, you know, this is David Taylor, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I didn't put two and two together, and I I was totally oblivious. And then eventually, you know, I caught on, like, okay. Um, yeah, we'd love to have your team, you know, we have an opening. Um, so he's been, their, their teams have been a regular participant. And um, last year, I want to say that they placed high. They were uh, maybe the runner ups last year. Um, but yeah, the first year he came and coached and it was super cool. Um, I've sent him text messages like, you know, thousands across the country wishing him good luck. And he's always, um, you know, responds back. He's receptive. Probably doesn't really remember who I am, but um, it feels like everyone in the sport is accessible. This is one of those sports where it's just a blue collar, hardworking group. Um, I wouldn't be afraid to call anybody, approach anybody about wrestling and and anything related to wrestling. It's Coach, that kind of sport. I, first off, the two guys, two of my favorite guys out of Minnesota are Coach Thorne. And yes. Coach Lawrence, those guys are awesome. Mac Ryder's there sometimes with um, Coach Lawrence and Pinnacle, but Thorn Wrestling and Pinnacle Wrestling, obviously they're gold, they're golden gophers. We won't hold that I'm against them, right? You know, good, right. great guys though, right? When you talk about accessibility, oh, you talk about yeah. guys who want the best for kids and their clubs are genuinely about growing the sport. What's it like bringing guys like that from Minnesota and Coach Thorn and uh, Coach Lawrence? It, it's been fun. So. Well, I met them early on with Mike Matten at uh, prospect camps. Um, so there was one organized at Delta. And then we went out to uh, Fargo. Uh, we hung out with those guys. And um, that was kind of my son's first taste of recruiting. So he got to meet the Minnesota staff. And and Damian Hahn was at uh, Cornell at the time. So he got introduced to Cornell. Um, but, yeah, they're all just uh, – they're passionate about wrestling. Um they're accessible. Um, they're willing to share technique and advice. Um, yeah. And they're fun to be around. I mean, it's just a great group of guys. And what's kind of cool about the Minnesota staff too, is that they all get along. I mean, I really enjoy being around uh, the Minnesota coaches. So you guys kind of um, were head to head 
with West Penn duels, I want to say, was kind of like the reason that the Pennsylvania teams never came over. Then you started getting like Ranger Pride wrestling. You started getting like Strip Matter. You started right. getting uh, Young Gun Strip Matter. And then you started getting some other Pennsylvania clubs that come over. And then obviously the New Jersey presence is huge. The Southern presence is huge. And then the West Coast starts coming in. You get a team from Colorado. Um, yeah, who won it last year? Yeah, they, they were phenomenal. Coach, Coach Jorenda does a great job with that team. Yes, he and, does. Um, he really does. Coach Jorenda does a great job, though, out of Colorado. Um, POWA, right, POA? POWA, yep. They do a great job. They're the defending champs. Dynasty Death Row, I believe, is one. They've won. They won like three in a row, didn't they? That's correct. Yeah, they they dominated. Yeah. Yeah, and then POWA came in. Paula came in with Coach Dorenda, got the job done. What's it like when you get a wild card like that and they kind of knock the champs off? Oh, I love it. I love the competition. I love to see these teams come in. I really have, you know, the lineup can change every year, so I really don't know where teams are going to go. You know, we do our best with seeding and trying to, you know, separate states. Um, we put a little group together to, to organize it, but it's fun to watch um, the competition. Um, I like our format. So, um, you know, we do a, a bracket the first day and then we do um, uh, a pull, you know, with crossover uh, the second day. Um, and it really, you know, is intended to bring out the best in the, in the tournament. I know there's a lot of issues with what you're talking about because some guys get seated weird and they don't like where they get seated and it gets, you know, you see the competition come yeah, out. Yeah, for um, sure. It gets seated. Yep. Why, do, what are all the different levels of pools that you guys, you have a gold, a silver, a bronze, and then does it go down to another, there's a fourth pool, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. There's a copper. I think that's what we call copper. It. Okay. So yeah. there are four pools. So everybody's getting max amount of matches each day. Like you said, That's no right. buys, 32 teams, eight, you know, and then you, they're based on how they perform within their pool. And then that's how they get seated in the, the tournament and, and in what pool they're in. I really like that. What do you think the biggest thing is when people go to these mega tournaments? There's, they're sitting around all day, man. They're there till midnight. It's a tournament of champions. You're there at one, two in the morning sometimes. You guys aren't into that. How did you, how were you able to kind of manage that? And make sure and plan for that. Um, you cut out, Zeb. Can you repeat that? The you, last how you managed it so that people aren't there until one in the morning, two in the morning, kind of like tournament of champions. I've been there at one, two in the morning. You know that such a yeah, massive tournament. Yeah. How did you yeah, manage so, it and plan it out so there wasn't any of that? Yeah. So we made sure that we had the space for the mats. We made sure that we had the right bracketing. Um, I know from my experiences traveling all over that um, it's maddening having to buy and, 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 you know, coming in late and leaving late or coming in super early. Um, so we start every day at nine o'clock. We're done by four o'clock, five o'clock latest. Um, and it's a lot going on, but it, it all runs. I mean, we have, um, you know, extra officials. Um, the, that's why we bring in exactly 32 teams, you know, so that there is, you know, no downtime and no odd bracketing either. You know, if we had some odd number, it gets kind of crazy with buys and seating and um, yeah, just keeping everybody uh, getting uh, adequate matches. So when teams come in too, they want to get, they want both. They want to get a lot of matches and they don't want to be there all day. So um, I think we accomplished that. You volunteer all your time and everything goes to Genoa wrestling, right? Yeah, we're a nonprofit organization. So that's probably one thing people don't know is that we're probably one of the very, very few tournaments that are at the national level where we're a nonprofit. Nobody, I don't make a dime from the tournament. Uh, nobody does. It all goes 100% back into our organization. I want to ask you, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what? Listen, yeah, I've my walked wife, in there yeah, my sometimes wife says that all and the time. you've been like, these two guys are calling me. They're angry about where they got seated in the pool. Yeah. And I'm like, Dom, why do you keep doing this? And you're not even getting paid. Why do you love Genoa wrestling so much? And why yeah. do you put yourself through this? What's wrong with you? Yeah, I don't, uh, you know, just we're driving to be the best. And and if you're going to do something, you know, be the best at it. Don't do it half-assed. So I think, I think we're there as a group. So um trying to build elite tournament, trying to build an elite organization behind it. And um, 
you know, with our club, we had some really good success and we've had some really down years, you know, and so the key is sustaining that success. Um, and it's hard to do when you're, uh, you know, a smaller club. So Dylan is going into his fourth year at Ohio State, correct? Correct. Red shirt. Well, he's in his fourth year at Ohio State. Red shirt, qualifier, qualifier, fourth year, right? And then does he right. have two more years after this year? Another yes. year and then another year because of COVID. Yes, right? it's crazy, right? Yes. So crazy. So my thing is you don't need to do this. Your kids, I mean, you got your, your grandfather, aren't you, Dom? That's right. You got grandkids. First off, congratulations, right? That's Thank awesome. You. But you could go be with your grandchildren. You could go go to Ohio State and be camp outside the Jennings Center. You could tailgate. You should go to Minnesota, Iowa, all these cool places. What keeps you around Genoa Wrestling? Um, it's something that we built together, and I would like to see it, it continue. Uh, we have some good young coaches coming through. My oldest son, Damien's uh, 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 the middle school head coach. Um, I really like what he's doing. I like what the coaching staff is doing. Um, coach Contos, Coach Bergman. Um, they're all working hard. So uh, I want to support that. Um, I want to see it continue. I want to create a system that will continue regardless of who's plugged in, you know? So if we can create that, I'm for it. You guys had 16 champions in 2017. Um, is that, did I get the year right? 2019, right? 20, was it 2019? 2019, yeah. I got the year real, real wrong. Yeah. Very wrong. 2019, so the year before COVID got shut down, you had the greatest state tournament in the history of Division Three in the state of Ohio. Can Genoa Wrestling get back there, in your honest opinion? I think it will take some hard work. I don't know if any team will ever get to that level of success at, at uh, D3 in Ohio. Um, we set the point record. We had the most um, state champs. We, I think we tied the state champs. Um, all all then, divisions, all divisions. Uh, I think so. Yeah. With Graham, I believe. Um, so I don't think any school will get there, but can we win a state title someday? I, boy, I hope so. That's, 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 that's the journey, right? I don't know that we'll get there, but that's the journey. That's the drive. I'd like to see us be a consistent top 10 team. Um, so I think the trick is now is figuring out consistency. I like your, I, that, you know what? That's a great answer. I like that you're not like, oh, yeah, we can absolutely have seven yeah. state champs. I mean, that's hard to do, man. What you guys did was amazing. And and for the program to be on the bounce back like you guys are, that's probably one of the most impressive things, for me at least, to see what Genoa Wrestling, um, you know, where it has, where it was, where, you know, where it dipped to and now where it's coming back up and scrappy, hard wrestling there in Ottawa County, Dom. I love it. Uh your community is super supportive of this. Obviously, Burnett Trained Wrestling, um, West Shore Wrestling, and all the clubs in Ohio bring a great presence to the tournament. Do you think yeah. it all starts with the Ohio clubs and what you guys have built with the relationships in Ohio? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the Burnett Trained Wrestling has been a huge, huge asset. So they help us run the tournament. Um, and then they submit a team. Um, and... They're super competitive. I think last year they did really well in the silver pool, uh, or they might even made the gold pool last year. I'll have to look it up. I believe but, they made the gold pool last year and were sat. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Yeah, they did really um, good. So Scotty's doing a wonderful job. And it even shows at uh, his high school team. So, you know, taking second at state of Ohio, uh, division one, and they should be banging on the door this year against they all the big boys. Six, all six of their state finalists are, are back. Do you realize that? Yeah, that's that's encouraging. That's <laughs> impressive. They got a great team. Uh West Shore, though. West Shore's always got a tough club. And then obviously that's like the feeder club to St. Edward. So you yep. can't count them out. Um, uh, Columbus. How do you feel about how you guys draw out of Columbus? I know that a lot of the really good Columbus kids kind of jump on a lot of these other all-star teams, but how do you feel about Columbus's presence at the tournament? Yeah, um Palmer brought a team one year. Um and we have this team from Beast Boat coming this year out of the area. Um, but the thing with this tournament is to fill all the weight classes. That, I mean, every team has studs, um, but to fill 17 weight classes, you know, across 
grade school and middle school weight classes is a challenge. So, I mean, you really have to, you know, be broad with your program. A lot of kids, a lot of programs too have great, great wrestlers, but they're all stacked at the same weights or, you know, grouped up at the same weights. Dom, it's 17 weight classes. What are the age groups that people can come in at to the national middle school? Those, what's the lowest age group that can come in at? Yeah. So we just say K through eight, but it's you a know. K through eight. Okay. Yep. Okay. And so we're unique too. You know, a lot of big tournaments will have an elementary division and a middle school division. We're just K through eight. Um, we've kind of blended the weight classes. Um, so it's unique. It's unique in that regards. So three of the four Matten boys wrestled in this tournament as well, because Drew's too old, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you it's just the who's who, man, who's wrestled at the National Middle School Duels. I love being at the National Middle School Duels. My favorite part, I'm not going to lie to you. My dad sits there and tells me about how he put the girders <laughs> up in the building. He yeah, did it last year, man. Cool. And it's, it's the best thing ever. Um, I'll tell you what. There was a kid last year out of uh, Fort Dodge, Iowa. Dre Sean Ross. Oh, my goodness. That guy, that is one of the most impressive performances. Obviously, Feister Brothers have been there before. The Dre Sean Ross guy, I was like blown. That guy blew me away. Obviously, Bo Bassett, Jack Forrest. Yeah. I remember I interviewed Jack Forrest one time. Jack Forrest got beat at the National Middle School Duels in Rossford. That was why I'm like, who is beating these guys? Whenever Gray Burnett comes up to me and he's like, oh, yeah, I want seven and two. I'm like, who is beating you? Right, right. A lot of these guys are top in the nation. They come out here and they'll get a loss or two. And, and it's that competitive. And the wrestling physicality is just off the chart too for for you know middle school grade school age kids are just to be you know scrapping out there um it's intense and it's impressive i love i've it. actually love had uh trainers who are kind of new to the sport come out there and they're, they're shocked at the the level of um intensity i mean the coaches are intense the parents are intense um, nobody wants to lose. So you got a national kid and he comes out to this tournament and he drops, you know, one or two matches. It's, it's tough. I've been there too. I've, I've, I've think I've thought my kid was a top in the, you know, and he's gone out and had a loss. And um, so I can relate. One of my favorite interviews obviously was with uh, <laughs> old man Ferrari. And then I got to talk to old man Cassiope last year as the tw both Cassiope brothers were at the tournament, the twins. And I just love dads like that, that it really appreciate it. Just how you talked about the tournament because Ferrari was like, man, I, I, I had to get up here. I had, you know, my kids are coming home with losses and I'm like, who's beating my kids. Yeah. Those are freaks. Those guys are freaks. They're really good. I remember Nate Burnett beat one of the Ferrari brothers one year. And I was just like, this tournament is unbelievable. Landmines everywhere. So fun to watch. I love calling the matches. I mean, it's just to see the clubs that I, you know, I love seeing compete. Obviously, you know, young guns is so much fun to watch. Um, I mean, you bring an Olympic medalist in to coach the kids and, and they're, there coaching, right? Like coach Paulson's there with uh, right. usually one of the two days with pinnacle obviously david taylor uh, mark mcknight comes with them too as well sometimes so it's just it's just such a great experience the people that you guys have drawn to the tournament i love it that's some of my favorite memories but my favorite though man is when the old man gets in there and he starts that's talking cool. about they built the seagate center now um glass city center they built in 85 86 i want to say is what he said does that sound right that sounds right yeah, and he was just, he got, he gets, you know, he's been there a couple of times and my dad likes, he likes high level wrestling, right? Because, oh, I, I found a 1985 uh, uh, World Cup uh, program signed by Dan Gable, by the way, too, in my parents' basement. They're moving out oh, of the house. Oh, that's cool. Hey, they're going to be full time Genoans, just so you know. Yeah. You're moving over back to the right side of the road, huh? There you go. <laughs> I have to get some of those Miller grandsons to come that way, too. <laughs> Uh, we got, we got bombers here, man. We've got nothing but Kenston bombers in this house. That's all I, I, I just, yeah. But, uh, Dom, I love this tournament. It's one of my favorite things. It feels like it's my baby. Um, we've been at it a while. I love it. Uh, 
You got anything else for me? Is there anything? Yeah, and I love the energy you bring to the tournament, Zeb. So you doing commentary at the tournament makes it um, even that more special. Uh, there's a certain energy to your commentary. It's exciting when you come in. Um, everything's lined up for a great tournament. We can't wait to get this thing going. And um, looking forward to all the teams coming in and, and meeting some of the new coaches. Uh, we have a couple of new clubs coming in. So we have a team coming in from Washington. So that's cool. So um, like Washington State West Coast? Yeah, yeah. Gresham Legionnaires. Yeah, so they're okay. coming in. Who else we got? Um, we got uh, PA Alliance. So they're a new team. Okay. Uh, Illinois Menace, Indiana Outlaws, a uh, team from West Virginia, um, Team Revival from New Jersey, and then Beast Mode in Ohio. So that coupled with our veteran teams, you know, some of those you mentioned, but, you know, Junior Turf, Storm Wrestling, um, Dynasty, Buxton. I mean, they'll Buxton, all be there. I'll tell you what, yeah. Buxton always brings it. They're always gold pool. Don't sleep on right. Buxton. Obviously out of New Jersey. Buxton does a great job. Obviously, Jeff Buxton, to the clubs named after longtime Blair Academy coach, Nittany, uh, Lehigh Valley Wrestling uh, Club coach. Jeff Buxton knows his stuff, man. And uh, I just saw him at the World Championships coaching Sebastian Rivera, I want to say. I might have that wrong, but I think I saw him in the corner, and I was like, that guy, man. Right. That guy, he, he knows his wrestling, and he's always – his club, even when he's not there, brings the heat. You know, I'm, I, we would be – that would be a slight we have to mention, Buxton. Um, where are people going to be able to watch this? What subscription service? How are people yes. going to be able to, you know, I'll put interviews on my YouTube on GoHioCast, but where are people yes. going to be able to watch this? We should have broadcast links soon. So it'll be broadcast on Flow. Okay. And well, it was track um, last year, I believe. Uh last year it was um track, yes. Yeah. So yeah, track. Um, flow on so, understand that. Yep. Yeah, so we broadcast it on flow, but we're using track software. So gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Nice. We're ready to go. Yeah, my voice isn't on there much, but I believe it was on there last year. So called the finals and some semis, had a good time. Uh made it in. Yeah, you were awesome time. last year, man. You're a little under the weather, but you you yeah, still... I didn't feel great. I didn't feel no. great. I went to no. uh comedy show the night before and was not feeling good the next day made it in you didn't think i was going to make it in you guys are like where are you no get no, into, like, get noon, did I? <laughs> blowing your phone up yeah i made it though we made it we you made did, it happen. You did. We got our interviews we talked you to did. people and made it an event they made it an event the kids are the event not me i'm just glad to be there all right man we can't wait to see you dom stick around thank you for the time thank you for being my first episode of of the ohio cast podcast i think you got it man success. anything i can do to support you awesome all right check it out i'm gonna put these on so we'll have audio we'll have youtube it's gonna be everywhere i'll blast it on social media dom d'amelio the national middle school duels i'll see you in the first week of november what's the date again november 12th 13th 12th last day center in toledo ohio toledo ohio some of the best middle school wrestling in all of the land. Dom, thank you for the time. Stick around. Thanks, Dad.